In this video presentation I shall discuss 36 extract based questions and their answers from William Sarines The Summer of the Beautiful White Horse. Now my dear students I welcome you all to my educational channel. The name of my educational channel is Priyanka Dutta. Here you will find video presentations on English language and literature of school level, college level as well as of competitive examinations. Now let us move to the main focus of this video presentation. Extract One day back there in the good old days when I was nine and the world was full of every imaginable kind of magnificence, and life was still a delightful and mysterious dream, my cousin Murad, who was considered crazy by everybody who knew him except me, came to my house at four in the morning and woke me up tapping on the window of my room. Q. How was the world when the story was written? Answer, when the story was written, the world was full of every imaginable kind of magnificence. Q. How did Murad wake the narrator up? Answer, Murad woke the narrator up by tapping on the window of the narrator's room. Q. What does the word crazy here mean? Answer, the word crazy here means mad. Q. Which two adjectives have been used to describe dream? Answer, the two adjectives which have been used to describe dream are delightful and mysterious. Extract. Our arm, he said. I jumped out of bed and looked out of the window. I couldn't believe what I saw. It wasn't morning yet, but it was summer and with daybreak not many minutes around the corner of the world it was light enough for me to know I wasn't dreaming. My cousin Murad was sitting on a beautiful white horse. I stuck my head out of the window and rubbed my eyes. Q. Where was Murad sitting? Answer. Murad was sitting on a beautiful white horse. Q. How did the narrator react when Murad called him? Answer. When Murad called him, the narrator jumped out of bed and looked out of the window. Q. Which expression refers to the time of the day? Answer. The expression which refers to the time of the day is it wasn't morning yet, but it was summer and with daybreak not many minutes around the corner of the world it was light enough for me to know I wasn't dreaming. Q. What does the narrator's rubbing the eyes suggest? Answer. The narrator's rubbing the eyes suggests a sense of disbelief. Extract. Yes, he said in Armenian. It's horse. You're not dreaming. Make it quick if you want to ride. I knew my cousin Murad enjoyed being alive more than anybody else who had ever fallen into the world by mistake, but this was more than even I could believe. Q. Why did Murad tell the narrator to make it quick? Answer. Murad told the narrator to make it quick if he wanted to have a ride on the horse. Q. What did the narrator know? Answer. The narrator knew that his cousin Murad enjoyed life more than any other living person. Q. Name a language mentioned in the extract. Answer. A language mentioned in the extract is Armenian. Q. Which phrase in the extract means something unbelievable? Answer. The phrase in the extract which means something unbelievable is this was more than even I could believe. Extract In the first place, my earliest memories had been memories of horses and my first longings had been longings to ride. This was the wonderful part. In the second place, we were poor. This was the part that wouldn't permit me to believe what I saw. Q. What had been the narrator's earliest memories? Answer the narrator's earliest memories had been memories of horses. Q. What had been the narrator's first longings? Answer. The narrator's first longings had been longings to ride on a horse. Q. What does the word permit here mean? Answer. The word permit here means allow. Q. Which phrase in the extract implies some kind of wish fulfillment? Answer. The phrase in the extract which means some kind of wish fulfillment is that wouldn't permit me to believe what I saw. Extract. We were poor. We had no money. Our whole tribe was poverty stricken. Every branch of the Garoglania family was living in the most amazing and comical poverty in the world. Nobody could understand where we ever got money enough to keep us with food in our bellies. Not even the old men of the family. Most important of all, though, we were famous for our honesty. Q. What could nobody understand? Answer. Nobody could understand where from the people of the Garoglania family got money to procure food for their bellies. Q. Why were the family members of the narrator famous? Answer. The family members of the narrator were famous for their honesty. Q. 
Which two adjectives have been used here to describe poverty? Answer. The two adjectives have been used here to describe poverty are amazing and comical. Q. Who were the Garoglanians? Answer. The Garoglanians belonged to a tribe of Armenia. Extract. We had been famous for our honesty for something like 11 centuries, even when we had been the wealthiest family in what we liked to think was the world. We were proud first, honest next, and after that we believed in right and wrong. None of us would take advantage of anybody in the world. Let alone steal. Q. For how long had the people of the Garoglania family been famous for their honesty? Answer. The people of the Garoglania family been famous for their honesty for about 11 centuries. Q. What did the people of the Garoglania people believe in? Answer. The people of the Garoglania people believed in right and wrong. Q. Which phrase in the extract conveys a kind of supposition? Answer. The phrase in the extract which conveys a kind of supposition is even when we had been the wealthiest family in what we like to think was the world. Q. What does the phrase let alone steal mean? Answer. The phrase let alone steal means that the matter of stealing was beyond their thought. Extract. Consequently, even though I could see the horse, so magnificent, even though I could smell it, so lovely, even though I could hear it breathing, so exciting, I couldn't believe the horse had anything to do with my cousin Murad or with me or with any of the other members of our family, asleep or awake, because I knew my cousin Murad couldn't have bought the horse, and if he couldn't have bought it he must have stolen it, and I refused to believe he had stolen it. Q. What could the narrator not believe? Answer. The narrator could not believe that the horse had anything to do with him, with Murad or with any other member of their family. Q. What did the narrator refuse to believe? Answer. The narrator refused to believe that Murad had stolen the horse. Q. What does the word magnificent mean? Answer. The word magnificent here means good looking. Q. Quote the phrase in the extract which refers to some kind of condition. Answer. The phrase in the extract which refers to some kind of condition is if he couldn't have bought it he must have stolen it. Extract. No member of the Garoglania family could be a thief. I stared first at my cousin and then at the horse. There was a pious stillness and humor in each of them which on the one hand delighted me and on the other frightened me. Murad, I said, where did you steal this horse? Leap out of the window, he said, if you want to ride. Q. Whom did the narrator stare at first? Answer. At first the narrator stared at his cousin Murad. Q. What effect did the pious stillness and humor of the horse and Murad have in the narrator? Answer. The pious stillness and humor of the horse and Murad made the narrator delighted and frightened at the same time. Q. Which expression in the extract conveys a belief in the garb of possibility? Answer. The expression in the extract which conveys a belief in the garb of possibility is no member of the Garoglania family could be a thief. Q. Which expression in the extract is conditional in structure? Answer. The expression in the extract which is conditional in structure is leap out of the window, he said, if you want to ride. Extract. It was true, then. He had stolen the horse. There was no question about it. He had come to invite me to ride or not as I chose. Well, it seemed to me stealing a horse for a ride was not the same thing as stealing something else, such as money. For all I knew, maybe it wasn't stealing at all. If you were crazy about horses the way my cousin Murad and I were, it wasn't stealing. Q. In which matter there was no question? Answer. There was no question in the matter that Murad had stolen the white horse. Q. From which matter was stealing a horse for a ride different according to the narrator? Answer. According to the narrator stealing a horse for a ride was different from stealing something else such as money. Q. What does the word invite here mean? Answer. The word invite here means give a proposal. Q. Which expression in the extract gives the justification of an illegal action? Answer. The expression in the extract which gives the justification of an illogical action is if you were crazy about horses the way my cousin Murad and I were, it wasn't stealing. Extract. It wouldn't become stealing until we offered to sell the horse, which of course, I knew we would never do. Let me put on some clothes, I said. All right, he said, but hurry. I leaped into my clothes. 
I jumped down to the yard from the window and leaped up onto the horse behind my cousin Murad. Q until what would it not be stealing? Answer, it would not be stealing until the narrator and Murad offered to sell the horse. Q, where did the narrator sit on the horse? Answer, on the horse the narrator sat behind Murad. Q, which expression in the extract conveys the eagerness of the narrator's sense of hurry while dressing? Answer, the expression in the extract which conveys the narrator's sense of hurry while dressing is I leapt into my clothes. Q, why did Murad tell the narrator to do things in a hurry? Answer, Murad told the narrator to do things in a hurry because he wanted to complete the act of riding before people woke up from sleep. Extract That year we lived at the edge of town, on Walnut Avenue. Behind our house was the country, vineyards, orchards, irrigation ditches, and country roads. In less than three minutes we were on Olive Avenue, and then the horse began to trot. The air was new and lovely to breathe. The feel of the horse running was wonderful. My cousin Murad who was considered one of the craziest members of our family began to sing. I mean, he began to roar. Q. What were there behind the house of the narrator which was on Walnut Avenue? Answer. Behind the house of the narrator there were vineyards, orchards, irrigation ditches, and country roads. Q. What was Murad considered to be? Answer. Murad was considered to be one of the craziest members of the family of which the narrator was a part. Q. Which two adjectives or adjectival phrases have been used here to describe the air? Answer. The two adjectives or adjectival phrases which have been used here to describe the air are new and lovely to breathe. Q. Which expression in the extract has the use of superlative degree? Answer. The expression in the extract which has the use of superlative degree is my cousin Murad who was considered one of the craziest members of our family began to sing. Extract. Every family has a crazy streak in it somewhere, and my cousin Murad was considered the natural descendant of the crazy streak in our tribe. Before him was our uncle Khosarov, an enormous man with a powerful head of black hair and the largest moustache in the San Joaquin Valley, a man so furious in temper, so irritable, so impatient that he stopped anyone from talking by roaring, it is no harm, pay no attention to it. Q. What is San Joaquin Valley? Answer. San Joaquin Valley is one of the long interior valleys of California. Q. From whom has Murad got the crazy streak? Answer. Murad has got the crazy streak from the narrator's uncle Khosrov. Q. Which word in the extract suggests the use of prefix im? Answer. The word in the extract which suggests the use of prefix is impatient, im plus patient. Q. Which phrase in the extract conveys a kind of generalization? Answer. The phrase in the extract which conveys a kind of generalization is every family has a crazy streak in it somewhere. Extract That was all, no matter what anybody happened to be talking about. Once it was his own son Arak running eight blocks to the barber's shop where his father was having his moustache trimmed to tell him their house was on fire. This man Khosrov sat up in the chair and roared, It is no harm, pay no attention to it. The barber said, but the boy says your house is on fire. So Khosrov roared, enough, it is no harm, I say. Q, who was Arak? Answer, Arak was the son of Khosrov. Q, why did Arak run eight blocks to the barber's shop? Answer, Arak ran eight blocks because he wanted to tell his father that their house was on fire. Q, what did the barber want to suggest to Khosrov? Answer, the barber wanted to suggest to Khosrov that the latter should not say that their house being on fire was no harm and that Arak should pay no attention to it. Q. What does the word rod here mean? Answer. The word rod here means spoke very loudly. Extract. My cousin Murad was considered the natural descendant of this man, although Murad's father was Zorab, who was practical and nothing else. That's how it was in our tribe. A man could be the father of his son's flesh, but that did not mean that he was also the father of his spirit. The distribution of the various kinds of spirit of our tribe had been from the beginning capricious and vagrant. Q. Who was Murad thought to be a natural descendant of? Answer. Murad was thought to be a natural descendant of Uncle Khosrov. Q. How was Murad's father Zorab? Answer. Murad's father Zorab was a practical man. Q. 
which two adjectives have been used to describe the distribution of the various kinds of spirit in the tribe of the narrator? Answer. The two adjectives which have been used to describe the distribution of the various kinds of spirit in the tribe of the narrator are capricious and vagrant. Q. Which expression in the extract conveys the idea that biological relationship does not determine one's character type? Answer. The expression in the extract which conveys the idea that biological relationship does not determine one's character type is the distribution of the various kinds of spirit of our tribe had been from the very beginning capricious and vagrant. Extract. We rode and my cousin Murad sang. For all anybody knew we were still in the old country where, at least according to some of our neighbors, we belonged. We let the horse run as long as it felt like running. At last my cousin Murad said, get down. I want to ride alone. Q. How long did the narrator and Murad allowed the horse to run? Answer. The narrator and Murad allowed the horse to run as long as it felt like running. Q. Why did Murad tell the narrator to get down? Answer, Murad told the narrator to get down because he wanted to have a solo ride on the horse. Q. Which expression in the extract conveys a simultaneous action? Answer, the expression in the extract which conveys a simultaneous action is we rode and my cousin Murad sang. Q. What does the word country here mean? Answer, the word country here means rural area. Extract. Will you let me ride alone? I asked. That is up to the horse, my cousin said. Get down. The horse will let me ride, I said. We shall see, he said. Don't forget that I have a way with a horse. Well, I said, any way you have with a horse, I have also. For the sake of your safety, he said, let us hope so. Get down. All right, I said, but remember you've got to let me try to ride alone. Q. What did Murad say when the narrator asked him if he would allow him to have a solo ride? Answer, when the narrator asked Murad if he would allow him to have a solo ride, he told that if the horse allowed so, he would not have any problem. Q. In which matter does Murad have a way? Answer, Murad has a way with a horse. Q. Which expression in the extract conveys an assumption? Answer, the expression in the extract which conveys an assumption is the horse will let me ride. I said. Q. Which expression in the extract conveys the sense of worry? Answer. The expression in the extract conveys the sense of worry is for the sake of your safety, he said, let us hope so. Extract. I got down and my cousin Murad kicked his heels into the horse and shouted, Wazire, run. The horse stood on its hind legs, snorted, and burst into a fury of speed that was the loveliest thing I had ever seen. My cousin Murad raced the horse across a field of dry grass to an irrigation ditch, crossed the ditch on the horse, and five minutes later returned, dripping wet. Q. What was the duration of Murad's solo ride on the horse? Answer. The duration of Murad's solo ride on the horse was five minutes. Q. What was the loveliest thing the narrator had ever seen? Answer. The loveliest thing that the narrator had ever seen was the horses standing on its hint legs snorting, and bursting into a fury of speed. Q. Which Armenian word has been used in the extract? Answer. The Armenian word which has been used in the extract is Wazire. Q. What does the phrase dripping wet suggest? Answer. The phrase dripping wet suggests that the solo ride on the horse has been toilsome for Murad. Extract. The sun was coming up. Now it's my turn to ride, I said. My cousin Murad got off the horse ride, he said. I leaped to the back of the horse and for a moment knew the most torful fear imaginable. The horse did not move. Kick into his muscles, my cousin Murad said. What are you waiting for? We've got to take him back before everybody in the world is up and about. Q. What according to the narrator was the most awful fear imaginable? Answer. According to the narrator the most awful fear imaginable was the immobility of the horse. Q. When according to Murad will they have to take the horse back? Answer, according to Murad they will have to take the horse back before everybody in the world has woke up. Q. Which expression in the extract suggests that it is about to be morning? Answer, the expression in the extract which suggests that it is about to be morning is the sun was coming up. Q. Which expression suggests a sense of urgency on the part of Murad? Answer. 
The expression which suggests a sense of urgency on the part of Murad is what are you waiting for? Extract. I kicked into the muscles of the horse. Once again it reared and snorted. Then it began to run. I didn't know what to do. Instead of running across the field to the irrigation ditch the horse ran down the road to the vineyard of Dikran Halabian where it began to leap over vines. The horse slept over seven vines before I fell. Then it continued running. Q. Over how many vines did the horse leap over? Answer. The horse slept over seven vines. Q. Who was Dikran Halabian? Answer. Dikran Halabian was a person who owned a vineyard. Q. Which expression suggests that the narrator was in a fix? Answer. The expression which suggests that the narrator was in a fix is I didn't know what to do. Q. What does the phrase instead of suggest? Answer. The phrase instead of suggests that whatever happens is unexpected. Extract. My cousin Murad came running down the road. I'm not worried about you, he shouted. We've got to get that horse. You go this way and I'll this way. If you come upon him, be kindly. I'll be near. I continued down the road and my cousin, Murad went across the field toward the irrigation ditch. It took him half an hour to find the horse and bring him back. Q. What was Murad worried about? Answer. Murad was worried about finding out the runaway horse and that too in a very short time. Q. After how much time was the horse found out? Answer. The horse was found after half an hour. Q. Which expression of Murad conveys a kind of assurance? Answer. The expression of Murad which conveys a kind of assurance is I'll be near. Q. Which expression conveys a strategic action on the part of Murad and the narrator? Answer. The expression which conveys a strategic action on the part of Murad and the narrator is I continued down the road and my cousin, Murad went across the field toward the irrigation ditch. Extract. All right, he said. Jump on. The whole world is awake now. What will we do? I said. Well, he said, we'll either take him back or hide him until tomorrow morning. He didn't sound worried and I knew he'd hide him not take him back. Not for a while, at any rate. Where will we hide him? I said. I know a place, he said. Q. What did Murad plan with the horse? Answer. Murad planned either to take the horse back or hide it until tomorrow morning. Q. Why did Murad not sound worried? Answer. Murad did not sound worried possibly because he had stolen it earlier and knew precisely where to hide it. Q. Which expression in the extract conveys a note of certainty on the part of the narrator? Answer. The expression in the extract which conveys note of certainty on the part of the narrator is not for a while, at any rate. Q. What does Murad mean by the whole world? Answer. By the whole world Murad means the people of the whole world. Extract. How long ago did you steal this horse? I said. It suddenly dawned on me that he had been taking these early morning rides for some time and had come for me this morning only because he knew how much I longed to ride. Who said anything about stealing a horse? He said. Anyhow, I said, how long ago did you begin riding every morning? Not until this morning, he said. Q. What did suddenly dawned on the narrator? Answer, it suddenly dawned on the narrator that Murad had been taking these early morning rides for some time and had come for me that morning only because he knew how much the long to ride. Q. What did Murad say in reply to the question as to how long ago did he begin riding every morning? Answer, in reply to the question as to how long ago did he begin riding every morning Murad replied that he began riding very morning not until that morning. Q. What does the word dawned here mean? Answer. The word dawned here means came to mind. Q. Which expression of Murad conveys audacity? Answer. The expression of Murad which conveys audacity is who said anything about stealing a horse? He said. Extract. Are you telling the truth? I said. Of course not, he said. But if we are found out, that's what you're to say. I don't want both of us to be liars. All you know is that we started riding this morning. All right, I said. He walked the horse quietly to the barn of a deserted vineyard which at one time had been the pride of a farmer named Fatewajia. There was some oats and dry alfalfa in the barn. Q. Who is Fatewajia? Answer. Fatewajia is the name of a farmer. Q. What is alfalfa? Answer. 
Alfalfa is a plant with cover-like leaves and bluish flowers. Q. Which expression in the extract conveys a strategy? Answer. The expression in the extract which conveys a strategy is of course not, he said, but if we are found out, that's what you're to say. Q. What does the word pride here mean? Answer. The word pride here means object of pride. Extract. We began walking home. It wasn't easy, he said, to get the horse to behave so nicely. At first it wanted to run wild, but, as I've told you, I have a way with a horse. I can get it to want to do anything I want it to do. Horses understand me. How do you do it? I said. I have an understanding with the horse, he said. Q. How did the horse according to Murad behave at first? Answer. According to Murad the horse at first wanted to run wild. Q. How did Murad tell he brought the horse under control? Answer. Murad told that he brought the horse under control by effecting an understanding with the horse. Q. What does the word way here mean? Answer. The word way here means manner of behaving. Q. What does the word understanding here mean? Answer. The word understanding here means knowing the psychology of. Extract. Yes, but what sort of an understanding? I said. A simple and honest one, he said. Well, I said, I wish I knew how to reach an understanding like that with a horse. You're still a small boy, he said. When you get to be thirteen you'll know how to do it. I went home and ate a hearty breakfast. Q. What kind of breakfast did the narrator have? Answer. The narrator had a hearty breakfast. Q. What sort of understanding does Murad have with the horse? Answer. Murad has a simple and honest understanding with the horse. Q. Quote an optative sentence used in the extract. Answer. An optative sentence used in the extract as well. I said. I wish I knew how to reach an understanding like that with a horse. Q. Which expression in the extract gives a hint about the age of Murad? Answer. The expression in the extract which gives a hint about the age of Murad is when you get to be 13 you'll know how to do it. Extract. That afternoon my uncle Kosarov came to our house for coffee and cigarettes. He sat in the parlor, sipping and smoking and remembering the old country. Then another visitor arrived a farmer named John Byro, an Assyrian who, out of loneliness, had learned to speak Armenian. My mother brought the lonely visitor coffee and tobacco and he rolled a cigarette and sipped and smoked, and then at last, sighing sadly, he said, My white horse which was stolen last month is still gone, I cannot understand it. Q. Why did Uncle Kosarov come to the narrator's house? Answer. Uncle Kosarov came to the narrator's house for coffee and cigarettes. Q. What did the narrator's mother offer to John Byro? Answer. The narrator's mother offered John Byro coffee and tobacco. Q. Which phrase in the extract conveys a note of surprise? Answer. The phrase in the extract which conveys a note of surprise is I cannot understand it. Q. Which expression in the extract conveys a sense of situational necessity? Answer. The expression in the extract which conveys a note of situational necessity is then another visitor arrived, a farmer named John Byro, an Assyrian who, out of loneliness, had learned to speak Armenian. Extract My uncle Kosarov became very irritated and shouted, It's no harm. What is the loss of a horse? Haven't we all lost the homeland? What is this crying over a horse? That may be all right for you, a city dweller, to say. John Byro said, but what of my Surrey? What good is a Surrey without a horse? Pay no attention to it, my uncle Kosarov roared. I walked ten miles to get here, John Byro said. You have legs, my uncle Kosarov shouted. Q. What is a Surrey? Answer. A Surrey is a light four-wheeled carriage. Q. What is the distance from the narrator's house to John Byro's house? Answer. The distance from the narrator's house to John Byro's house is 10 miles. Q. What does Uncle Kosarov want to mean when he says, you have legs? Answer. When Uncle Kosarov says, you have legs he wants to mean that John Byro could have walked the distance. Q. Quote the sentences which collectively draw a comparison with a decisive conclusion? Answer. The sentences which collectively draw a comparison with a decisive conclusion are what is the loss of a horse? And haven't we all lost the homeland? Extract 
My left leg pains me, the farmer said. Pay no attention to it, my uncle Khosrov roared. That horse cost me sixty dollars, the farmer said. I spit on money, my uncle Khosrov said. He got up and stalked out of the house, slamming the screen door. My mother explained. He has a gentle heart, she said. It is simply that he is homesick and such a large man. Q. How much money did John Byro pay to buy the white horse? Answer. John Byro paid sixty dollars to buy the white horse. Q. Who is said to have a gentle heart? Answer. Uncle Khosrov is said to have a gentle heart. Q. What does the expression I spit on money mean? Answer. The expression, I spit on the money means that the speaker does not want to keep the financial matter into consideration. Q. What does the word slamming, mean? Answer. The word slamming means closing with a loud sound. Extract. The farmer went away and I ran over to my cousin Murad's house. He was sitting under a peach tree, trying to repair the hurt wing of a young robin which could not fly. He was talking to the bird. What is it? He said. The farmer, John Byro, I said. He visited our house. He wants his horse. You've had it a month. I want you to promise not to take it back until I learn to ride. Q. What is a robin? Answer. A robin is a bird that usually has red feathers at its beak. Q. What does the narrator want Murad to promise? Answer. The narrator wants Murad to promise that he will not return the horse until he learns to ride. Q. Name a fruit mentioned in the extract. Answer. A fruit mentioned in the extract is peach. Q. Quote an expression from the extract which is grammatically incorrect. Answer. An expression from the extract which is grammatically incorrect is the farmer. John Byro, I said. Extract. It will take you a year to learn to ride, my cousin Murad said. We could keep the horse a year, I said. My cousin Murad leapt to his feet. What? He roared. Are you inviting a member of the Garoglania family to steal? The horse must go back to its true owner. When? I said. In six months at the latest, he said. Q. How long will it take the narrator to learn to ride? Answer, it will take the narrator a year to learn to ride. Q. To whom must the horse go back? Answer, the horse must go back to its true owner. Q. What does the word latest here mean? Answer, the word latest here means maximum. Q. Why did Murad leap to his feet? Answer, Murad leapt to his feet because he became utterly surprised to hear that the narrator wanted to keep the horse for a year. Extract. He threw the bird into the air. The bird tried hard, almost fell twice, but at last flew away, high and straight. Early every morning for two weeks my cousin Murad and I took the horse out of the barn of the deserted vineyard where we were hiding it and rode it, and every morning the horse, when it was my turn to ride alone, leapt over grapevines and small trees and threw me and ran away. Nevertheless, I hoped in time to learn to ride the way my cousin Murad rode. Q over which did the horse leap? Answer. The horse slept over grapevines and small trees. Q. For how many days did the narrator try to ride successfully? Answer. The narrator tried for 15 days to ride successfully. Q. What does the word turn here mean? Answer. The word turn here means opportunity. Q. Which expression conveys the bird's difficult but successful resuming of normal life? Answer. The expression which conveys the bird's difficult but successful resuming of normal life is the bird tried hard, almost fell twice, but at last flew away, high and straight. Extract One morning on the way to Fatwaji Yar's deserted vineyard we ran into the farmer John Byro who was on his way to town. Let me do the talking, my cousin Murad said. I have a way with farmers. Good morning, John Byro, my cousin Murad said to the farmer. The farmer studied the horse eagerly. Q. Where did the narrator and Murad run into John Byro? Answer. The narrator and Murad ran into John Byro on their way to Fatwaji Yar's deserted vineyard. Q. Who had a way with farmers? Answer. Murad had a way with farmers. Q. What does the word studied here mean? Answer. The word studied here means observed. Q. Which expression in the extract conveys a proposal? Answer. The expression in the extract which conveys a proposal is let me do the talking, my cousin Murad said. Extract Good morning, 
son of my friends, he said. What is the name of your horse? My heart, my cousin Murad said in Armenian. A lovely name, John Byro said, for a lovely horse. I could swear it is the horse that was stolen from me many weeks ago. May I look into his mouth? Of course, Murad said. Q. What name did Murad give to the stolen horse? Answer, to the stolen horse Murad grave the name of my heart. Q. What could John Byro swear? Answer, John Byro could swear that it was the horse that was stolen from him many weeks ago. Q. Name a language mentioned in the extract. Answer, a language mentioned in the extract is Armenian. Q. Which expression in the extract conveys a sense of permission? Answer, the expression in the extract which conveys a sense of permission is may I look into his mouth? Extract The farmer looked into the mouth of the horse. Tooth for tooth, he said. I would swear it is my horse if I didn't know your parents. The fame of your family for honesty is well known to me. Yet the horse is the twin of my horse. A suspicious man would believe his eyes instead of his heart. Good day, my young friends. Q. Who is referred to here as the farmer? Answer. John Byro is referred to here as the farmer. Q. What would a suspicious man believe in? Answer. A suspicious man would believe in his eyes than in his heart. Q. What does the phrase tooth for tooth mean? Answer. The phrase tooth for tooth means that the stolen horse resembles this horse from the perspective of each and every tooth. Q. Through which expression does John Byro want to suggest that the narrator and Murad have stolen his horse? Answer. The expression through which John Byro wants to suggest that the narrator and Murad have stolen his horse is I would swear it is my horse if I didn't know your parents. Extract Good day, John Byro, my cousin Murad said. Early the following morning we took the horse to John Byro's vineyard and put it in the barn. The dogs followed us around without making a sound. The dogs, I whispered to my cousin Murad. I thought they would bark. They would at somebody else he said. I have a way with dogs. Q. When did the narrator and Murad take the horse to John Byro's vineyard? Answer. On the following morning of their meeting John Byro the narrator and Murad took the horse to John Byro's vineyard. Q. With whom does Murad have a way? Answer. Murad has a way with dogs. Q. What does the word whispered mean? Answer. The word whispered means spoke in a low voice. Q refer to a word in the extract which refers to an animal sound. Answer. A word in the extract which refers to an animal sound is bark. Extract. My cousin Murad put his arms around the horse, pressed his nose into the horse's nose, patted it, and then we went away. That afternoon John Byro came to our house in his Surrey and showed my mother the horse that had been stolen and returned. Q. How did John Byro come to the narrator's house? Answer John Byro came to the narrator's house by riding on his surrey. Q. What did John Byro show to the narrator's mother? Answer. John Byro showed the narrator's mother the horse of his which had been stolen earlier and returned that morning. Q. Which word in the extract refers to a kind of carriage? Answer. The word in the extract which refers to a kind of carriage is surrey. Q. Which expression in the extract refers to the affection of Murad for the horse? Answer. The expression in the extract which refers to the affection of Murad for the horse is my cousin Murad put his arms around the horse, pressed his nose into the horse's nose, patted it, and then we went away. Extract. I do not know what to think, he said. The horse is stronger than ever. Better tempered, too. I thank God. My uncle Khosarov, who was in the parlor, became irritated and shouted, Quiet, man, quiet. Your horse has been returned. Pay no attention to it. Q. To which matter did Khosarov tell John Byro not to pay any attention? Answer. Khosarov told John Byro not to pay any attention to the matter concerning the loss and getting back o the horse. Q. Where was Khosarov? Answer. Khosarov was in the parlor of the narrator's house. Q. Which expression in the extract conveys John Byro's sense of wonder? Answer. The expression in the extract which conveys John Byro's sense of wonder is I do not know what to think, he said. Q. Which expression in the extract is grammatically incorrect? Answer. The expression in the extract which is grammatically incorrect is better tempered, too.
Before concluding this video presentation I request you to subscribe my channel, to put forward your queries in the comment section of this video presentation and to share my video presentations to your friends. I thank you all. See you again in my next video presentation. Thank you.